All right, on to the games. I have to do this before at least 2 a.m. I can't go another night without sleep. That would be pretty ridiculous, but uh, I'm having fun with the format, so... And the weekend is soon. Technically, it's Friday today. All right, game one with my Junds didn't quite get their deck. And this is not a great hand. It's got things I can play eventually, and I'm not really meant to be an aggressive deck, I guess, so... Yeah, we'll keep. It's not ideal, but... Oh, well. Magma Jet, alright. Something for me to leave up here. Arachnus Web. We're still kind of going slow. Deputy of Acquittals. I fire off my Magma Jet here because I want to scry, but probably a waste of the removal. I mean, this is just a bear, and I'm not super worried about my clock. He's clearly some sort of Esper creature-based control. Uh, this is probably a wrong decision, but I did not want to draw into more lands. More lands would have been pretty brutal, and so I wanted to scry. Here we get Vital Splicer and Explore. Uh, I probably should have bought him the Explore. Is a thought. I guess I wanted to stay flexible in case I want to Arachnus web something, but nope, after that I just have to put Umber Spider. Playing Vital Splicer was a thought uh, because it puts out two bodies that way if he has some sort of bounce effect, like a Mist Raven next turn, then I can still block the Tandem Lookout. Uh, the downside, of course, is if he has something like a Wing Splicer, then I can't block his guy. So I decided to play around the Wing Splicer. Perhaps it was incorrect. No punish, though. That's nice. We draw another Vital Splicer. All right. I drop my Vital Splicer. Attacking with my Penumbra Spider. He's got a trick. Yep, another Deputy of Acquittals. All right. Bounces his guy. Fine with me. Replays Tandem Lookout. All right. Decent enough. And I think it's time for me to beat face. I don't really want to go long against this guy. I could have some troubles if he generates just a ton of value off of his stuff. Huh, he's got some green in here as well. That's interesting. Well, I decide I want to see what his hand is. And we see Opportunity, Ghostly Flicker, and Vital Splicer. Well, I can't let him... He doesn't really have a lot of value off of bouncing his guys right now. I mean, he can get an extra golem, but uh, I can't let him have opportunity. That, that card is just not fair. Although we do have him on a pretty fast clock here, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Sure. I decide to kill off the bear. I'm not really worried about him getting in for damage with his tandem lookout at this point. And uh, it's just easier for me to kill off stuff. Like with the vital splicers, I can kill off his guy. Got in my damage. Plays his vital splicer. I know he has ghostly flicker up. Powerwild shaman, eh? I attack with my guys. I can regenerate if need be. Looks like he's just going to go see Flicker. Fires it off now. Gets another Golem. Uh, figures out his Soul Bond triggers. And I am just going to drop my big fatty. And he concedes. Doesn't have the gas left in the tank to do anything. Uh, his ghostly flicker basically only got him a 3-3, three, three, and uh, I'm still going to be beating with my 3-3s three, because I can regenerate them with the vital splicer, and he's just going to have to sack creatures, and it's not going to go well. So I'm liking my position. We go on to uh, to game two. I don't know if I should be keeping this hand. One lander, but I've got Rakdos Signet into doing stuff. I have an Explorer. I have ways of getting out of this. Uh, our opponent mulligans to six. I keep this hand a little bit loosely, but we are rewarded with a Golgari Guildgate, and the lands just keep coming, which is great. 
I decided to Rakdos Signet here. Maybe Explore was correct. I have some choices here. I'm kind of worried about the Tandem Lookout, but I, I don't really want to waste my removal on a Talon Trooper at the same time. Plus I have Explore and two lands. I kept the Burning Tree Emissary from previous uh, because I was a little bit worried about fixing for my red. I probably should not have been. Uh, I had the Rakdos Signet and the Rakdos Guildgate. So it was probably just a mistake to play the guild gate there. And if I'd played this guy out, I actually might be in a position if I'd play this a little bit differently to attack in and then blood rush with the Pyrewild Shaman, potentially. That could have been a play. But I didn't think that this guy was going to be able to get in. And so I didn't really see the value of playing him right away. I, was, I figured he would play something. Probably a misplay, though, ultimately. I, I should just be getting my burning tree out, get the Rakdos Signet out. So I don't know. I'm kind of wary of, of getting my fixing with this deck. I guess the problem was I just I saw, saw myself having all these red cards. I thought I might actually be going down in tempo if I played the Burning Tree Emissary just to play the Rakdos Signet because I wouldn't have the red to cast everything. Bit of a mistake, I think. I think we get punished here. He plays a Tandem Lookout. And now, I mean, potentially he wouldn't have blocked my Burning Tree Shaman, right? He would have smelled some sort of trick, and because he has the Tandem Lookout, he wouldn't want to trade off his guy. So it probably wouldn't have impacted things in a big way if we had ordered things differently, but doesn't help us either. Well, we have to spend some removal on his guys here. I decide I need to start getting in. We kill off his guy, and then I'm just going to... Drop my Pyrewild Shaman for blocking purposes. Core Hookmaster taps down my Shaman. Maybe I should not have attacked in. Either way, we're down a lot of cards at this point. I also could have used my Ground Assault on his Tandem Lookout to prevent some sort of situation like this. But uh, we're really far behind now just because of the way I've set up this early game. But I don't want to go long. I'm really worried about this. I end up having to use Augur Spree on his thing. Not feeling good. Selesnya Signet, so now he has his colors online. Blade Splicer, well, that's going to hold the ground pretty pretty hard for us here. I'll trade off the Golem, though. Sure. Get my Vital Splicer out. I need to get rid of that golem because otherwise I don't have good attacks for the rest of the game. I'm smelling some sort of blink, which he has, and this game is way out of hand now. If we'd played differently, we could have at least prevented him from drawing one of the cards. He probably still would have drawn the other because I don't think he would have... I don't think he would have blocked and he would have smelled our trick. So this guy is the Esper Bant Splicers. And now we're drawing lands, which is not where we want to be. I'm just blocking here. Deputy of Acquittals. He's got a lot more blink effects. All right, so we're kind of seeing what his deck is about. Replays Blade Splicer. We're drawing more lands, which is not what we want to do. And we're not going to do well here. More Deputy of Acquittals. So he's like a blue-white splicers with... Blade Splicer, Sensor Splicer, all sorts of stuff. We're not going to win this one. I just want to see a little bit more of his deck. Seagate Oracle, sure. Deputy of Acquittals, again. Yeah, and we draw Magma Jet. I don't want to show him it. He doesn't show us any more cards. And that's game. So, I don't know, perhaps the ordering, if we had done it a little bit differently, we would have denied him at least one card draw. I don't know. I really should have just played out the Burning Tree Emissary, though. Not worry about the red fixing. I had a Rakdos Guildgate and the Rakdos Signet. I'm not sure the outcome changes here, but... Yeah, it could have been better. Alright, on to Game 3. Well, this is a pretty good keep, I think. We can't cast pretty much anything. I mean, we basically, this is another situation we need to hold the Burning Tree Emissary for fixing. Because we have to play Rakdos Guildgate, and then like Forest, and then Forest, and cast Burning Tree Emissary off the two Forest to play the Sprouting Thrynax. But it gets there. 
And I guess it's a question of whether or not we value spreading Thrynex over Skurzdag Cultist. I think after this match, I replaced one of the forests with, uh, with some other land. Because the difficulty of casting Skurzdag Cultist became very real. And Sprouting Thrynax and Augur Spree are also very difficult for us to cast. We get in with our Thrynax. Another Talon Trooper. Alright. Thrynax again. Alright, we get a two for one here. Pretty nice. Don't really want to spend removal on Talon Troopers, but okay, he has Vital Splicer. I'm going to play out this guy as Anthem and swing in with my guys while his regen is down. Hungry Spriggan. I'm kind of liking where we're at. Here's maybe where I play a little bit too aggressively. Evil Twin. Card is pretty good. I know he's going to kill off my Thrynax if I leave his Thrynax up. I also don't have the red at this point to play Skurzdag Cultist. I kind of have an option here. I could, just right now, Magma Jet is Vital Splicer to prevent a uh, to prevent him from being able to chump block with it. Bring him low, and then if I'm able to get off Skurzdag Cultist, that means that I have an extra 4 damage on his face, presumably, depending upon how he blocks. I would be attacking with the Spriggan and the, the Thrynax. However, I also know he's got a lot of Blink. I kind of am worried that I need to be using the Magma Jet in response to some sort of blink. I'm not exactly sure how I should have played this. Um, we're really wishing we could play the Skurzdag Cultist. If we can get him low enough, it doesn't look like he has life gain, and then the Skurzdag Cultist will just burn him out. It's one of the options. I decide not to go after his Vital Splicer. I attack him with everybody, sort of my most aggressive option. He decides to bunch up on the Spriggan. Alright. I will kill off the Thrynax, because he's just going to regen the Golem anyways. And I'm fine with him having a bunch of blockers. So I get in my damage. Sensor Splicer. Well, I want the Scry because I want to find mountains pretty badly at this point. Alright, well, neither of those are mountains, so they're going to go to the bottom. He attacks him with his golem. That's fine. Entomer Exarch, huh? Sure, we make some trades. And let's see what I can find in his hand. His hand is Opportunity, Deputy of Acquittals, Tandem Lookout, Urbis Protector. Oy, that is a lot of gas. Well, we take the Opportunity because that's the only thing we can take. But I'm really hoping we find this Skurzdag Cultist stuff soon, because this is about to be a pretty big beating. He attacks in. Sure. I have to trade. I can't let him draw all those cards. Well, Falcon Wrath Noble's pretty good. This could win us the game. We're very close. Attended Knight. Alright. We know he has a Deputy in his hand. We also know he has... His big ol' angel. We still have not found what we need here. We have him down to four. Play my Penumbra Spider for blocking. Core Hookmaster to tap down my Falcon Wrath Noble, prevent it from getting in again. If we can if he can stay off a of land for just a little bit, we'll be able to Ooh, there's our red source. Alright. We just need to keep him off of red just a little bit here. We're going to keep him off an extra land just a little bit here. That way we can prevent him from playing the Urbis Protector. So close. Dinrova Horror, though. Pretty bad. Bounces my Falcon Wrath Noble. I couldn't sandbag the land because I needed it for the Skurzdag Cultist. Now, of course, we can sandbag lands, but... Is it too late? He gets his Urbis Protector out. Alright, we'll explore. We find a Mog Flunkies. I'll play the Mog Flunkies. Skurzdag Cultist. We need you to do work. 
All right, Core Hook Master is going to tap down my Skurzdag Cultist. That's unfortunate. Well, we'll sack our Thrynax in response. I need a bunch of chump blockers here. He attacks in. Well, I will trade off my flunkies. Might as well sandbag the lands. And we make it. We win. Pretty amazing. Close game, close game. Any sort of removal or another way of blinking this core hookmaster and potentially we lose. Uh, this is the... Yeah, this is the same one. All right, so... We... Where am I? Here I am. All right. Match two. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired. Well, this hand is something. I mean, it's got removal, it's got desecration demon. I, it has no black sources, unfortunately, but three lands, things to play with those lands and explore to ramp us out potentially. Eh, this is a keep. I think a lot of stuff is going to be awkward for our deck because we didn't get enough fixing, really. We explore. Cool, we found another land. That'll help get us some stuff. Demir Signet, so we're up against some sort of cruel control. I play the Pyrewild Shaman. Maroi, huh? Well, I decide I just want to ground assault that and start clocking him as quickly as possible. If I don't put him on a clock, this looks like the sort of deck that'll beat me pretty quickly. He pilfered plans me, which seems odd. Normally you want to pilfered plans yourself. Milling me is not really that great of a strategy. Extractor Demon. Is he a mill deck? I explore. I find things. Sure. I should have just scryed both to the bottom. And just have him take off whatever random stuff was on top. I leave the Augur Spree on top because I'm still wondering if he's going to mill me. Him, him milling me with the pilfered plan seems like... Yeah, he decides to mill me. I'm not exactly sure why. He does understand normally you want to just mill yourself. But whatever, in any case. I think it was... I'm not sure if it was correct. I mean, on the one hand, he did show us that he wanted to mill us. On the other hand, it isn't really correct for him to mill us. Evil twin on my desecration demon. That is pretty bad. I don't actually have any removal for a desecration demon. Maybe he'll block? Uh, no such luck. We bring back Pyrewild Shaman. We play a Hungry Spriggan. He taps to kill my guy. We are struggling, struggling, struggling. Well, if he doesn't have removal... Nope, he has removal. If he didn't have removal there, the Hungry Spriggan would be a 4-4 four, four that I can make Seven powered with trample. Yeah, he's able to flash back the grasp of phanta phantoms and beats my face. Well, I'm still in the same boat. If I can get my hungry spriggan in. Nope, he's got more removal. He's got a pretty good deck here. Evil Twin is hard to beat. He's got Unburial Rites, which makes me really wonder why he was milling me this entire time. But brings back his Extractor Demon, and that's going to put away the game. Yeah, nothing much we could do. On to game two. This is a keep. It's slow, and maybe I should have boarded out some of this slow stuff, because I, I pretty clearly have to be aggressive against him. And Evil Twin is also still just not something I can really beat. But, it's got ramp. I mean, it's got a signet. It's got things to do. We play out a Skurzdag Cultist. He attacks in. It's fine with me. I decided just to be mana efficient here. Play the Golgari Rotworm. I can't sack things in response to the Evil Twin, because the Evil Twin just then copies something else. Soul Manipulation. Alright, he's got Remove Soul, basically. Wing crafters up his Azure Mage. Sure. Alright, well, 
I have a choice here. I could play Sprouting Thrynax. But I can't play Sprouting Thrynax and Gaia's Anthem. Because I only have two green sources here. Uh, and I need three to play all of them. So I decide... You know, it's a little bit risky to play Arachna Spinner. Get in for another two. He taps down my Arachna Spinner. I cast my Arachnus Web on his Azure Mage. Then he plays Evil Twin again, which is not something I really want to see. We're going to have a hard time beating this guy. I could potentially get there with my Skurzdag Cultist. It is a possibility. He goes to destroy my Spider, so I sack it. I'm just going to his face, because that's really the only way I'm going to win this game. Augur of Bolas, all right. Falcon Wrath Noble. Well, maybe we get there now. Attack with my Thrynax. He just takes it. All right. There's four damage. Grasp of Phantoms on my Skur's Dead Cultist. Well, I will sack my Thrynax while I still have Falcon Wrath Noble out. Get the drain. Get two damage. Have him down to seven. Replay my Skurzdag Cultist. I could start attacking in with Sapperlings, potentially. It's tricky, though. I mean, I attack in with three Sapperlings. Just try and deal some damage. One Sapperling is going to die to the Arachna Spinner. Another one's probably going to kill as a Wing Crafter. The other one's going to get blocked by Augur of Bolas. And so we'll trade a Sapperling for a Wing Crafter and deal two damage to him, drain him for two. I decide that's worth. Again, oh, works out about as we expected. He's down to five. Agony Warp on my guy, unfortunate. Desecration Demon. I do have a choice of just starting to sack things here to try and drain him out. I don't know what I'm going to draw off the top, though. I decide against it. I have I have the opportunity next turn. My own Desecration Demon. Alright, well, we can win this now. Maybe I should sap a sap, sack a Sapperling. Get it started. Pilfered Plans. I do not sack a sapling. Not yet. I will sack one now. And that's game. He knows I'm going to attack him with the Desecration Demon, and then things are going to be very bad for him. I'll just keep on sacking to this guy. I have removal for some sort of shenanigans that he might pull. Alright, so we squeak one out. Game 3, match 2. This hand, well, good enough, I suppose. I'm seeing Entumor Exarch Pitkeeper. I, I brought in stuff once I saw you started milling me. I think if he doesn't know that he shouldn't be milling me, then I should take advantage of that. I've torn the souls and Pitkeeper from the sideboard. Being able to torn the souls out one of my Desecration Demons or something seems like really big game. All right, just swinging for eight randomly. We just naturally get all of our colors. I play the Pit Keeper out because I need to play aggressive, start beating down. He has a Seagate Oracle to stop that, though. So, I get out my Thrynax. Fair enough. He plays an Augur of Bolas. Well, time to get in. And we're going to play our Vital Splicer here. I could have played Rakdos Guildgate, left up Augur Spree, with the intention of playing in Tumor Exarch. I'm not really sure there's a huge advantage, though. Desecration Demon. Yeah, I don't like going up against that guy. Well, I have removal of a sort. Yeah, it doesn't want to block my golem. I can just regenerate it. The attack looks decent because it's conceivable that I want both of these to die. And I auger spree down his dude. We have him down to 14. This deck doesn't look to have any life gain. Dinrova Horror. I did not want to see that. Again, I couldn't sandbag a land because I needed it for the fixing here. 
I needed the second red source for Skurzdag Cultist. In any case, we'll ditch this uh, Arachnus web. It's pretty bad. Well, Burning Tree Emissary. It's fixing of a sort as well. I play the Skurzdag Cultist first. Uh, I'm probably looking to Entombor Exarch pull back a creature. Also, I need to start hitting him with the Skurzdag Cultist. My win condition is basically to Skurzdag him. He's got Agony Warp. He keeps milling me, which is nice. Gives me more options with Entombor Exarch. And maybe I made the wrong decision this game. So I have Entombor Exarch. And I have to decide what I'm going to grab here. And I end up grabbing the Skurzdag Cultist. It's tricky because, on the one hand, the Falcon Wrath Noble flies, and he has no flying defenses. On the other, the Skurzdag Cultist deals two a turn, and also can potentially, with Gaia's Anthem, with all my saplings, clear the way for me to go in. Right, I can kill off his Dinrova Horrors and things of this sort. I also have another Falcon Wrath Noble in the deck, so I could, I could get that effect already, and just being able to sack my guys is something that I don't really have a lot of duplication of. Unburial Rites on his Desecration Demon. All right. Well, now I'm a little bit regretting my choice of what to take. Not in a huge way, because on on one hand, this is a blocker for my flying Falcon Wrath Noble. Uh, on the other, I could just be sacking and tapping down his demon for the rest of the game and probably winning. We're not going to sack anything. He... Thinks about whether or not I'll sack first. Attacks with the Desecration Demon. Pretty bold. Grixis Slave Driver. So he is just mucking up the ground here. In a way that is not very fun for us. Arachnus Spinner. We're a ways away from casting that. I don't have enough mana to play Gaia's Anthem, Magma Jet, and Skurzdag Cultist. Which is a little bit unfortunate. We Gaia's Anthem here. And I consider my attacks. He has four blockers. I only have 14 life, so I'm in a little bit of an awkward situation. A big part of the problem is that he has white mana and unburial rights. So if if I kill off his Dinrova Horror, he could pull back his Dinrova Horror, replay it again. Right? Like right now, he doesn't have anything in his graveyard, any creatures in his graveyard. Kind of difficult here to figure out what to do. Uh, I certainly don't want to kill off this Grixis Slave Driver. It'll just create a bunch more ground creatures for him. Uh, ultimately, I decide we're probably just going to try and win by pinging him in the face seven times. Pilfered Plans. Pilfered Plans does not find him another creature for his Unburial Rites. Because he mills me again. I think he doesn't quite understand what's going on. He has Evil Twin again. This is the third game in a row. Gets a Skurzdag Cultist. Well, this is unfortunate because now I kind of have to kill that Skurzdag Cultist. I have a choice uh, whether or not I Magma Jet it or I use the Skurzdag Cultist. I end up sacking because I'm going to have two red mana next turn so I could, have, I could keep up Magma Jet and Skurzdag Cultist. Golgari Guildgate. I kind of want to sandbag land. I also kind of just want to get my Arachnus Spinner out. He plays an Azur Mage. No attacks. Well, I need to get this party started. I want to scry to see what I can find. Well, Pyrewild Shaman is kind of interesting. It gives me a sack outlet. And I just start pinging him. Golgari Rotworm. We ditched both of the other guys. Soul Manipulation. Alright. Sure. He had Unburial Rites anyways, so... Not the biggest of deals. Crippling Chill, though, on my Skurzdag Cultist, and now my win condition is gone. Unfortunate. And we're just going to slowly lose this one to his crazy deck. This guy's deck is... Pretty insane. This is a deck I try to make quite often. I get my stuff out here, but I don't have really a win condition anymore. Skurzdag Cultus is going to kill mine. 
He can't attack in because of the Arachnus Spinner. I ground assault, but I still don't have any really good attacks. Unfortunately. He has Imburial Rites mana. I'm just kind of slowing him down. I could try and attack in here, but I don't have nearly enough to kill him. I'm at 8 life. Kind of in a bad spot. This is the position where you wish you had... Well, Cyclonic Rift is probably the best of the bunch, but... Uh, Gruel War Chant, Strength in Numbers, some sort of finisher like that. Skur's Dad Cultus was supposed to be our finisher, but he had a few too many things. And he, with the combination of Spire Monitor and Grasp of Phantoms, is going to finish us off here. To add insult to injury, he has a Rakdos Guildgate to get red for his Skur's Dad Cultist. He doesn't play any red, he just happened to have it in his sideboard, apparently. Yeah, but now we're just going to lose. He's going to see the line. Yep, he sees the line. And that's game. Frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. If we... I feel like he played really poorly and he kept milling me when that isn't... is pretty clearly not the correct thing to do because I have Torn of Souls somewhere in my deck and I have Pit Keeper and I have Entumor Exarch and I was bringing in all my stuff and just unfortunately his deck was just so crazy we couldn't quite get there. Just too many Agony Warps and things of that sort. He had a soul, mani soul Manipulation that was also kind of bad for us. Evil Twin was a pretty pretty bad beating for us. We didn't have a lot of great answers to that. So I don't know. We came pretty close. If we if we could just dodge that Dinrova Horror for one turn, or not had to play out our lands, if we could have play, sandbagged a land for the, this Dinrova Horror, things would have been much better. In any case, we are 1-1. One and one. Going into match three for the money. Yeah, this is a keep. Um, it's potentially a situation where I need to hold my Burning Tree Emissary again. That way I can play my Sprouting Thrinax. We'll see how it works out. We seem to be up against another control type deck. Pit Keeper, huh? Well, I decide I want to hold my Burning Tree Emissary. That way I can play my Sprouting Thrinax. We get punished by Tandem Lookout, however. And this is not going to be fun. Alright. Usual drill. Burning Tree Emissary. Sprouting Thrinax. Uh, he attacks in. I'm not sure why. I just kill off his guy. I'm not sure what he was trying to bluff there. But it was pretty bad. He doesn't re-soul bond to the Ogre Jailbreaker. It's potential. It's possible he's just sacking the Pit Keeper. That way he could repair the Tandem Lookout later. I'm not really sure what to make of it. But uh, we're going to play a Penumbra Spider here. We're kind of getting stalled out on the ground because of these Ogre Jailbreakers. I'm still not entirely sure why he played that Pit Keeper. I decided to get the Vital Splicer out first. I do have the opportunity to just play Forest and then Golgari Rotworm. Pilfered Plans. He mills me. This is another guy who doesn't seem to understand that Pilfered Plans is usually for milling yourself. Wing Crafter. Soul Bonds with the Lookout, but I have Reach. So I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. Here, I play the Golgari Rotworm, and I'm looking to just Alpha Strike him down. Serum Visions, sure. He attacks in. Pretty desperate to draw a card. I will block. Grizzly Spectacle on my guy. Alright. So he's able to get in for a card. And we are just going to jam it, though. You want to draw cards? You can draw cards. I'm swinging with all my guys. Except for the spider. Death's Shadow, huh? Phantasmal Image on the Death's Shadow. And a Kraken Hatchling. So he just suddenly plays two Death's Shadows on us. But we can drain him out here. He attacks him with his Death Shadows, but that's not really going to do anything. I block. I regenerate my Golem. I sacrifice my Sprouting Thrinax. And unless you have something crazy, I'm just going to drain you two more times at the end of the turn. Sure. Yeah, well, drain you. Drain you. I guess it's not technically technically a drain. 
And I don't remember what he said. All right, so the guy didn't seem that good at the game. Just running in his pit keeper for no reason. I don't quite understand. But uh, his deck is a little scary here, and I need to play it right. Two Death Shadows. Death Shadow is not easy for my deck to beat, unfortunately, because I'm kind of doing damage to him. My finisher is like one point of damage at a time. Not quite where we want to be. Tandem Lookout, again, on the play, has it. We did not have a creature. We could have ground assaulted his guy, but... We'll ground assault now. I don't want any more shenanigans. Alright, well... I'll just be mana efficient, get out a Vital Splicer. It's putting out about as big a body as the Sprouting Thrynax. I get in. I have some options. Decide to play the Skurzdag Cultist. Get that going as soon as possible. Swing in with both my guys this time. I'm a little bit less worried about a, uh, a surprise creature this time because... Alright, he trades off. Fine with me. I decide here just to play the Vital Splicer. More power on the board. Doesn't give me something good to sack, but he opportunities, draws a bunch of cards. I should also probably just be playing out my lands. I'm a little bit worried about Dinrova Horror. I don't really want to discard any of this. Alright, well, let's Sprouting Thrynex. No, Rewind. Unfortunate. Well, I suppose we will have to Magma Jet then. I didn't attack him with my Skurr's Dead Cultist because I'm also just worried about um, him being able to play uh, Spire Monitor. He has Grizzly Spectacle for my Cultist though. So now life is a little bit difficult. Copies my Splicer, then Grizzly Spectacles it. Alright. Pit Keeper. Bringing back my Desecration Demon. He seems to like milling me, so... Sure. I'm not going to sandbag lands anymore. I'm just going to jam this demon. It's possible I should have played Entumor Exarch. To try and make sure his hand is clear first. Death Shadow. Alright. It's a 3-3. Three, three. I have an interesting choice here on this turn. I have Gaia's Anthem, and I can put him down to 3, and then he's really forced to have a lot of stuff to be able to, to, to survive here. It's possible that I should just be playing Entumor Exarch here, making sure I know what's in his hand, and then looking for some sort of Alpha Strike. I decide to take the more aggressive route. Does not really pay off, though, unfortunately. So, we make the trade. His Death Shadow is big now, but ooh, now he gets to rebuy his Death Shadow. That doesn't seem good for us. Dinrova Horror, of course, once we're no longer sandbagging lands. Well, it's possible we were just losing this game anyways. So... He was able to play, that turn, three creatures, clear two of my creatures, and make me discard my hand? Yeah, well, I don't know. I think in another world, the aggressive line paid off. In this one, it didn't quite work out. And I'm just not going to show on the Golgari Rotworm. All right, go on to the next game. Match three, game three, for the money. Packs are bust. Uh, this hand is keepable. It's got fixing for red, too. We could do the same trick as last time. Alright, well, I'm just going to run out this Burning Tree Emissary. I don't have any red cards in hand, and I, I do know I need to put them on a clock. Drawing another land at some point would be nice. I've kind of gone a lot of drops without finding a land. Rakdos Guildgate. This is part of our awkward mana base. Well, 
Might as well play it. Pilfered plans, huh? Well, we get in. I don't really want him to seal of doom something good. It's not a lot of great targets here, though, because a lot of my stuff is black. Mist Raven. I did not see this card from before. It's possible I should have played Vital Splicer, and then just he kills off uh, the Vital Splicer Golem here. Ah, that isn't really that much better. And the Desecration Demon is just big beats if I can get it down. Desecration Demon, play a Guildgate. Alright, I will bite. Let's swing in. He blocks with Mist Raven. Sure, sure. I'll just play my Golgari Rotworm. Be mana efficient. The opportunities. All right, so we're on a little bit of a, a little bit of a clock here. Copies my Desecration Demon. Grizzly Spectacles my Desecration Demon. Wing Crafter. All right. Well, I can kill his guy. It is awkward with my mana, and that's really awkward because this is my only red source as well. But I feel like getting in for five here is going to be pretty valuable. I'm wondering if I should be sandbagging lands. He did mill me, so Pyrewald Shaman gets to come back. Now that I have Pyrewald Shaman in hand, I'm not that worried about being Dinrova Horde because I'll just ditch the Pyrewald Shaman, so I play my land. Tandem Lookout. That's not so hot. Gets in, draws a card. Entomer Exarch. Bringing back Mist Raven. Huh. Well, this is difficult. His stuff has flying. I just play Falcon Wrath Noble, swing in for another five. I blood rush my Pyrewild Shaman. Get him down to one. And I'll he's at one, and I have a Falcon Wrath Noble on the board. So, he's got a Mist Raven, my guy. Yep. Gets in. Grizzly Spectacles, my, my creature. Alright. So, shields are down. I know he doesn't have counter magic up. I'm thinking this is the time I have to stick the Falcon Wrath Noble. And that's what we do. Now, we can just dodge something like a Denrova Horror. But he's drawn so many cards at this point. There's a Denrova Horror. That's not good. That's the card we needed to dodge. It's possible we should have played Vital Splicer Sprouting Thrinax. Gotten those down, and then we have uh, no good targets for his Denrova Horror. And basically we get to play Falcon Wrath Noble and then attack in. There's a good chance that our Falcon Wrath Noble just gets countered. Not sure which of them we should have done. We go for the Falcon Wrath Noble, and he has the counter. And though he's at just one life, and we have a Falcon Wrath Noble here, we can't quite get the job done. Too many cards off this Wing Splicer Tandem Lookout combo at the last second. And another Denrova Horror, and that is game. Painful, painful, painful. He's at one life in the third game of the third match for the money. Can't pull it off. I feel like one of the... the where this deck had shortfalls was the mana base. Um, like, we, we had a, not enough fixing, ultimately. And we had this awkward fixing where it was kind of all in the Rakdos Guild Gates. And I think, ultimately, just the Augur Sprees and the... Uh, uh, Sprouting Thrinax were just a little bit too difficult to cast because we had a bunch of red and black fixing and then we had a bunch of forests. And you'll note in a lot of these games, it's not like we had... Uh, part of the argument could have been that we should have run fewer forests, um, but it's not like we had a ton of green sources in our games either. Um, some of them we had a bunch of forests, sometimes we didn't have forests, and it was pretty critical that we play our green stuff, I felt. So I don't know. 
difficult, tricky situation. I think the mana base just wasn't quite there for this deck to, to come off. And uh, because of it, I think we were just losing points in our games. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it would have made the difference. It was, it was unclear whether or not a better mana base would have uh, gotten us a win in some of those games. But it was so close. And uh, I really don't know what to think. I thought the deck was good. But we just didn't quite get there. And, you know... I think I think this sums it up right here. Third game, third match. All all of our matches went to three games. He's at one. We just can't get we just can't get our Falcon Wrath Noble to stick on the board long enough to kill him. It's also just part of the problem that we kind of we started off green in the draft, and then we just got completely cut from green for basically the rest of the draft. First pack had we were basically mono green. And then no green came for the rest of it. And so we we can't we kind of hadn't really prioritized fixing in a big way. And then we sort of needed to find both fixing and the rest to fill in our deck. And so we have some sacrifice synergies here, right? We have Skurzdag Cultist, we have Falcon Wrath Noble, but it's not a reliable thing. And so we kind of ran into this problem where we just really weren't getting... We weren't able to sacrifice on demand to close out some of these games, right? Um, we had to... Skurzdag Cultist, one at a time, things of this sort. I don't know. We had the strong components of the Sacrifice stuff. I think just a little bit of more synergy with some of the weaker components, like a, um, a Vampire Noble, Vampire Aristocrat. Whatever his face is, the Grey Ogre that sacks dudes. Something like that might have worked out well. A Gnawing Zombie? I don't know. Something along those lines might have pulled this deck in, but... One and two, pretty disappointing. I don't think we opened any money, if I recall. And there we have it. First first uh, fail of the drafting season, unfortunately. All right. Next set of replays.